he may or may not have watched my other um, Ottawa tutorial, but I thought I'd make another one here. So um, I'm actually going to show you entirely from the beginning here. Uh, so what you first want to do with Autowit is you're just going to go right click and then new and then in this new section you'll see Autowit v3 script and then you can just name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it test I guess. Okay and then you can open it up and this is what it will bring up as a um, as kind of the default thing. So, what I first want to do here, um, since my last tutorial was kind of bad, I think I'm going to start over here. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to start out with variables and message boxes and maybe flags and stuff like that. Uh, so anyway, this dollar sign, when you put a dollar sign in front of anything, it automatically turns it into a variable. That's just kind of how auto it works. So no matter what I call this, say I call it Paul, this is a variable now. And I can use this variable anywhere in my code and I can assign it a value. And it'll hold on to that value no matter where I used in the code. So say I did a standard if statement. Um, if dollar sign Paul is equal to one, then then it'll do whatever I say here. And I think I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. So I'm gonna say message box, then bracket. You always have to do bracket, and then our flag is gonna be zero. Uh, I'll explain that a little later. Uh, our title will be um, poll, and our text contained within the message box will be poll is equal to one, and that's it. And then we put our closing bracket on, and then we say and if. And from that point on, um, now whenever we run this, it'll assign Paul the value of 1, and then it'll run this if statement. And if Paul is equal to 1, then it'll tell me that Paul is equal to 1. Fair enough, right? And now what I... Actually, I'll get to that later. Um, so we'll go to Tools and Go. And, oh, look at that. So as you can see, I made a mistake here. See how that's kind of a darker color than this regular color is? That's because I made a mistake. It'll automatically show that for me. So end if has to be one solid word, I guess. And now if I go go, and it says Paul is equal to 1. And that's simple enough, I'd say. So now, uh, what we can do after this is we can start changing the values of Paul. So what I think I'm going to do here is message box. And our flag is going to be 1. So this flag of 1, it's actually going to give us two options. It's going to be either OK or Cancel. It has those two options built into this flag. Uh, you don't need a title or text. Um, so if you don't want to have them, you can either do this and a comma to skip to the next one, or I believe you can just do that and it'll skip to the next section. So now we're working with text here. And our text is going to be choose either OK or cancel. OK. 
And now, uh, what we actually want to do is, um, so we're going to make Paul equal to zero off the bat, and we're going to go dollar sign Paul equals this message box. I know that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but uh, according to this flag, uh, depending on which button is clicked, if I click OK, it'll return 1. And if, it, if I click Cancel, it'll return 2. So that means Paul will either be 1 or 2. If I click OK, Paul is 1. If I click Cancel, Paul is 2 at this point. So, um, so that means we will have this pop up here if I click uh, OK. So I'm just going to say, you clicked OK. Simple as that. And then I'm actually going to extend this. So else if dollar sign Paul equals 2, then message box, MSG box, 0, comma, all, comma, you clicked, oops, you clicked, cancel. And what that means is if we click OK in this message box that pops up, then it'll run this script, and then do end if and continue on. Or, if we click cancel, then it'll skip over this one. It'll run this section, then end if, and continue with the program. So now we're just going to click go, and oh darn, okay. So I guess we can't do that. Um, so I'm just going to do the two... Uh, quotations there. Okay, so choose either OK or Cancel. So if we click OK, you clicked OK. Fair enough. Now if we go through it again, and we click Cancel, you clicked Cancel. So it actually ran this one instead. And then we click OK, and it continues along through the code. It doesn't ever go through this one, this one section here. And to prove that uh, we went on to this section, I can just write another message box. Zero, quotation, quotation, and there we go. Click either OK or Cancel, we click OK, and it brings up another message box. So it's on to this next section here. Okay, so that was our standard um, our variables. Sorry, just collecting my thoughts. Um, so we have variables, we have our message box, we have the flag of our message box is being assigned to our variable. And we did an if statement, an else if statement. So that's all just kind of the basic stuff. Um, most programming languages have a lot of similarities, and these basics are always lying in, in the code. Um, so what we can do now is something a little more complicated. So I'm just going to save this, and we're going to create a new one. So new AutoWeb P3 script, and this is going to be called game. Again, we get rid of all this. Oops. Um, so what you'll actually want to do most of the time is assign all your variables beforehand. Um, it's just good programming style to do that. Like, you can do it 
um, when you're actually using them. But uh, I find it's a lot easier when all your variables are sitting at the top and if you want to change them, like change the value in them or something, uh, they're easily accessible and you don't have to look through your code to find all of them. Uh, something I didn't cover is actually sleep. So what sleep does is it causes a delay. Well, this actually says it much better than I do. Um, but the delay is in milliseconds. So that means if I type a thousand, then that means it'll delay for one whole second. No more and no less. It'll just count to one and then it'll continue on through the code. So if I actually want to do something in particular here, dollar sign sleep inside here, that means I can change this variable. I can change how long of a delay it is simply by changing this value. So I can change it to 2,000, that'll be two seconds. So that means when it runs through this, it'll actually pause for two seconds before going to the next um, section of code. Um, I think I'm going to do some mouse move type stuff. So mouse move, that's one of the, um, I don't, uh, <laughs> rather poor at speaking, I'm trying to get better at this, but, uh, okay, so basically what mouse move does is it'll move your cursor to the pixel location that you assign it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do 0, 0. And what it does is it starts at this top corner of the screen here. And it goes uh, x across and y down. And that means since my screen is 1366 by 768, pixels, that is, um, that means I have 1366 uh, in the x axis and 768 in the y axis. So what I can do with that is this mouse move, 0, 0 is this top corner, and 1366, 768 is this bottom corner here. So what I can do is I can do mouse move to this top corner, and then I can do um, mouse move to 1366, 7, oops, 768. And what that'll do is go from here all the way down here to that bottom corner there. Um, and what we can do is we can do a sleep for our sleep time, our sleep variable, which is assigned at the top. So we can change whatever this is. Uh, I think later I'll show you how to use an input box, and then we can actually change that while the program is running. And as you can see, it moved to this top corner, and then it slept for two seconds, and then it moved to this bottom corner. Um, just so you can see, I'm going to take my mouse, or my hand off the mouse when I click on this, uh, just to see that I'm not doing anything. You can't actually change what it's, what it's accomplishing um, while it's doing it. So if it's moving the mouse like that, no matter how hard I fight it, it'll kind of jiggle the mouse around, but it'll still go to the location that you were, you asked it to go to, which is, I don't know, good or bad in certain situations. Um, anyway, so I just did that. Uh, what I'm going to do now is input box. I haven't actually used these in a while. Uh, let's see, title, prompt. Uh, okay. So it actually asks for a string. It'll assign it a string value. 
and whatever is put into this input box will actually be like the input box now holds that value, uh, whatever it may be. So um, what I'm going to do here is um, enter anything. Um, uh, a string actually can hold, um, well, anyway, in auto it, it can hold uh, numbers and letters and, like, anything that you enter. So, actually, what I'm going to do here is dollar sign uh, entry. Let's say that. So, dollar sign entry equals the value that you put into this input box becomes input box. So you're assigning the value that you put into the input box as dollar sign entry. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to show a message box. And what this is going to be for is to show uh, what you entered. So we're going to say you entered. Uh, I'm not sure if I can do it this way. Entry. No, I think it has to be outside of the quotations. So dollar sign entry. And then the other bracket. I believe that'll work. I haven't uh, messed around with AutoIt in a while. Uh, oh, right, since we put it up here, we need to assign it a value. So I'm just going to say zero right off the bat. Um, wrong number of arguments. Hmm. Oh. I wasn't really thinking clearly about that. Um, hang on. Input box. So title and prompt. Okay. So title and now our prompt. Enter. Enter anything. Okay. So the reason I had to do that is um, darn. I forgot how to get all that stuff out of the way. Uh, oh darn. Okay. Well. The reason I had to enter this is because if you saw their uh, MSG box, let's just say this for example, um, everything before these uh, these brackets that we have here, everything that is before that has to be entered, otherwise it won't run properly. So you have to enter a flag, you have to enter a title, and you have to enter text. And then these are optional. And you can choose to do them. Um, and in order to move to this one, you have to enter a value for this. And then you can use that one. Um, now, what exactly did I do wrong here? Um, should say down here at the bottom. Okay, so I believe it's... I can't put that in there. Um, hmm. I'm gonna be right back. I'll see if I can figure this out. 